This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. It was cool in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary auto theft division. The boss is Captain Green. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. 10, 10 a.m., we had just finished a six-day jury trial on a case brought to our attention by the Los Angeles City Department of Water and Power. When we got back to the office, we met a representative from another city department with a problem. The employee was George Watson, Department of Animal Regulation. We didn't know if we could help him or not, but we told him we'd try. a.m. George Watson left us the list of lost dog owners. Our next job was to convince the captain an investigation was warranted. Nothing on your mind? Uh, yes, sir. We were kind of wondering how heavy the caseload was. For the first time in six months, not too bad. Why? There doesn't seem to be anything real pressing right now, does there, Captain? I didn't ask for a recap on the division workload. What's on your mind? Uh, well, there's this case we'd kind of like to look into. It has to do with a bunch of lost dogs. Lost dogs? What are you talking about? Friday, you part of this? Well, yes, sir. You see, I... See nothing. Both of you better reread the department manual. The jurisdiction for lost dogs lies solely with the Department of Animal Regulation. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir, we know that. But there's a little more to it than just a straight loss. We think there's possible criminal activity here, and we thought you might feel the same way. All right, let's have it. Yes, sir. Well, George Watson from Animal Regulation was just in. Now, he's had about 20 reports of lost dogs from the El Centro Shopping Center over the last couple of months. His records show only one dog reported lost from the area before this rash of reports. He thinks they've been stolen, that it? Yes, sir, he does. Watson talked to the owners when the reports were made, and just about all of them indicated they didn't remember leaving the windows down as far as they were when they got back to their cars. What kind of dogs were they? Different breeds, Captain, all purebred. Watson gave us this list of victims. We figure the dogs are possibly put up for sale or maybe used for breeding purposes. Watson says their market value runs all the way from $100 to $1,000. Yeah, I know they can get expensive. I'll bet the owners don't give a hang about the money, though. Sir? This one, for example. German Shepherd. Answers to the name of King. You can bet these people had a lot of feeling for this dog. You can really get attached, you know. Yes, sir, I guess you can. We had a Shepherd once. Called her Queenie. What a dog she was. Those big almond-shaped eyes looking up at you. You know what that dog used to do? Uh, no, sir. What was that? She'd bring me the mail from the mailbox every day, if that wasn't something. But she wouldn't give it to me till I'd scratch behind her ears and thank her. And did she watch over the kids? <laughs> they called her Keeney. Couldn't say Queenie, you know. But let some stranger look at him cross-eyed, she'd act like she was going to tear him apart. Great dog. Almost human, you know? Yes, sir. Oh, Queenie. Lived to be almost 16. Like losing a member of the family. Well, what do you think, Skipper? Shall we look into it? Cap? Huh? Can we work the case? Oh, yeah, yeah. Get right on it. Could be a lot more to this than just lost dogs. We have the time. Run it down. Yes, sir. Friday, Gannon. Yes, sir. And have a little empathy. The people you're going to be dealing with have suffered more than just a monetary loss. It's like losing one of the family, you know? Yes, sir, we understand that. Ten fifty a.m., we began the investigation by interviewing the dog owner who had made the most recent lost report to the Department of Animal Regulation. 11.10 a.m., we arrived at the residence of Myron Bentley. A note on the front door of his home indicated he could be found in the garage. 
I left that note on the front door in case somebody found Duke and brought him home. We have our address and phone number on his collar, you know. Yes, sir. It sure is nice of you boys to help out. Didn't know the police department got involved in this sort of thing. We usually don't, Mr. Bentley, but this is kind of a special case. Well, I'm beholden to that. Duke's real special to us. The wife bought him about a year or so ago. She's an invalid arthritis, put her in a wheelchair several years ago. The dog makes a good companion for her, is that it? He does that. Or I should say he did. I wasn't much on dogs at the time. But I swear that Duke got part of me so wrapped up, I miss him more than the wife does. Is this Duke? Yes, sir. That's him. Well, now, he's a mighty fine-looking English setter, Mr. Bentley. I'll tell you that. Appreciate your compliment, but he's a clumber spaniel. Oh, is that so? Yes, sir. Duke has a fine background. Dates back to the 1750s. English ancestry, I suppose. His breed was brought along in France. Oh, I see. A Frenchman by the name of Noai developed the breed. It wasn't until 1760 he gave a bunch of them to the Duke of Newcastle over in England. That's the reason you call your dog Duke, because of the Duke of Newcastle. Oh, I don't know. I'd say it was a toss-up. No, I was a Duke, too. That was kind of a thing in those days, for noblemen to give dogs back and forth as presents. I was making this for Duke. Wanted to give him a present on his birthday next week. How do you like it? It's quite a doghouse, Mr. Bentley. Most folks would think I was crazy building all this for a dog, but Duke's all the wife and I have. It was her idea at first. She found this drawing of the Duke's castle and thought it'd be nice to make him a replica. The castle belonged to the Duke of Noai? No, the Duke of Newcastle. Clumber was the name of the Duke's estate. That's where the dog got its name, Clumber Spaniel. Oh, sure. Just about finished now. Kind of got in my blood once I started. Keeps our hope up we'll get him back. Take a look in here. Get right down here. Take a look inside. Kick that light switch on right beside you there. The wife used to be an interior decorator. She did the inside. Rugs, wallpaper chandelier, and even the Duke of Newcastle's coat of arms. See it back there? Isn't that something? Yes, sir, it sure is. Never seen anything like it, Mr. Bentley. I added a little special touch, too. Kick that button there, Sergeant. And then if Duke wants to get out, why, well, there's another button on the inside. Kind of adds that medieval touch, you know? You think Duke will be able to work those switches, do you? I know he will. Smart as a whip. Why, Duke will have that drawbridge mastered quick as a wink. That is, if we ever get him back. Has he ever run away before, Mr. Bentley? No, sir. He's always been real obedient. I'd tell him to stay, and he'd stay put till I told him to move. I guess he got kind of mixed up, though. How's that, sir? At that shopping center. He probably jumped out of the car window to go looking for me, then got himself lost. It's a big place, you know. Yes, sir. Now, do you remember leaving the window down far enough for him to jump out? Well, tell the truth, I'm kind of confused about that. Well, how do you mean? Well, I thought I'd left it down just a few inches. But I must have had other things on my mind because it was down darn near all the way when I got back to the car. Which window was it? The one on the driver's side. Did you lock your car? Yes, sir. What about when you returned? Was it still locked? Yes, sir. I remember because I had to use my key to get in. Well, what's all this have to do with finding Duke? Well, you see, Mr. Bentley, a fairly easy way of getting into a car when the window is partially open is to run a wire down through the opening. It's an easy matter to pull up the lock. You mean you think somebody stole Duke? It's a possibility, Mr. Bentley. That's why we're looking into it. No, I can't believe that. Dogs just jump out of cars once in a while. It happened to my wife's friend a few days ago at the same shopping center, as a matter of fact. Did she report it? I don't know whether she did or not, but she got her dog back inside of two days. Oh, she found it? No, sir. Somebody else did. Eula, that's her name, Eula Van Meter. She put in an ad in the classifieds, and this fellow read it and delivered the dog right to her door. Now, this ad, Mr. Bentley, was a reward offered? Yes, sir. Hundred dollars. She was happy to pay it, same as me. Oh, is that right? I put an ad in myself this morning, offered 200 reward, and Duke's worth every dime of it. I love that dog, Sergeant. I'm not ashamed to say so. I just love him. It's not how much he's worth in dollars. Yes, sir, we understand. A personal pet. How do you put a value on that? Although not believing his dog had been stolen, Myron Bentley agreed to notify us in the event someone answered his newspaper ad. Bentley gave us the address of his wife's friend, Eula Van Meter. We drove over to talk to her. Oh, Zardy just loves everybody. Well, I shouldn't wonder. He's certainly a mighty fine-looking Irish wolfhound. Uh, he's an Afghan hound from one of the finest breeding lines in the country. Oh, sure. I guess I just got the breeds mixed up. Well, I can't understand why. There isn't the slightest resemblance. No, I can see that. What did you say your dog's name was, ma'am, Zardy? Yes, I call him Zardy. It's short for Zardan. Oh, that's very interesting. Zardy, short for Zardan. Do you recognize the name? Well, I... Not many people do, you know. It is refreshing to meet someone who really knows the history of the breeding lines. Oh, I try to keep up on things. Yes. 
Zardan was the first Afghan hound, at least the first to be exhibited to the world. I thought it would be nice to name Zardi after his famous ancestor. I can't agree with you more, ma'am. After all, Zardan was the first. What was that man's name again? I have the hardest time remembering. Oh, what man is that? You know, the one that exhibited Zardan in England for the first time. It was 1907. Oh, well, the uh, name slips my mind right now. Barr, that's it. Mr. T.A. Barr. Right, T.A. Barr. He's the one that exhibited Zardan for the first time in England, 1907. Yes. You know, I thought I lost my Zardy for good. Yes, ma'am, that's why we're here, Miss Van Meter. Now, what were the circumstances surrounding the loss of the dog? Oh, the silly thing jumped out of the car while I was in the pet store buying him a new collar. Where was that, the El Centro shopping center? Why, yes, just three days ago. I didn't know what to do when I got back to the car and found Zardy gone. Did you notify the animal shelter? No, I didn't even think of that. Now, what condition was your car in when you found him missing? Condition? Yes, ma'am, I mean the windows, the doors. Oh, well, that was my fault, all right. And I'll tell you, it won't happen again. What's that? I left the front window roll down so far, Zardy just jumped out. You sure you left the window down? Well, I must have. It was down and Zardy was gone. Did it seem at all strange to you, ma'am? The window being down? Well, yes, I guess it did. I always make a habit of leaving it down just far enough for Zardy to get some air. In fact, for a minute there, I thought I was going crazy. But you forget things like that when you're in a hurry. Well, now, in other words, your first recollection was that you left the windows rolled up. Now that you mention it, yes, that's right. Now, you didn't notify the animal shelter, but I understand you placed an ad in the newspaper. Is that right? Yes, sir. And am I glad I did. This nice man read the ad the first night it was placed and brought Zardy back to me. Did you offer a reward? One hundred dollars. But I didn't pay that. You didn't pay that. I gave him $50 extra. I was so happy to get Zardy back, you know. Can you describe this man to us, ma'am? Well, he was young, about 20, and uh, kind of small, 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, somewhere in there. Hair and eyes? Hair dark, eyes light. Did you happen to notice what kind of car he was driving? Why, yes, I used to have one just like it, a 56 Chevy. And the color? White. Tell me, why are you asking all these questions? We think there's a good chance your dog wasn't lost, Miss Van Meter. You don't mean that man stole him? Yes, ma'am, it's a possibility. Well, I never would have thought that. Tell me, would his license number help? If you have it, yes, ma'am. Well, only the letters. It was funny I noticed. But you see, I'm a member of the Afghan Hound Association, and when he drove off, I just happened to catch it. The letters on his license plate were A-H-A. Afghan Hound Association. Can you remember anything else about the car? No, that's all. I'm sure you'll find this all very innocent, Sergeant. He was such a nice young man. He wouldn't have stolen Zardy. Well, we're just checking, ma'am. We want to be sure. I understand. Is there anything else I can tell you? No, ma'am, that should do it for now. We would like to take a look at your car before we leave. Oh, I'm afraid that's not possible. Oh, why is that, ma'am? The garage man picked it up this morning. Oh, is that so? Yes, the door lock on the driver's side. It got broken somehow. One thirty p.m., we returned to Parker Center. Bill began making a telephone follow-up with the remaining lost dog owners while I arranged to have the partial license number run through the department's automated field interview card computer system. 2.40 p.m., I returned to the office after having provided Officer John DeCoupecrank the necessary descriptors for the automated FI card computer run. You get any info on that license? No, not yet. They're running it now. What's that you got there? What, these? Oh, just the reports we've been taking, that list in the animal shelter. I've already called most of the owners. No, I mean underneath. Underneath? Yeah, that. Oh, that? Yeah, that. Well, it's a book, Joe. I can see that. You have to know it's a book about dogs. I figured that brush up a little might help on this case. Yeah, from your conversations this morning, I'd say you could use it. Oh, I don't know. You just try me. I'll pick any dog at random, cover the breed name, and call it. That is a Norwegian foxhound. Nope, you're wrong. Okay, smart guy. What do you think it is? A borzoi, once called a Russian wolfhound. You're right. Certainly I am. All right, what's this one? It's a Briard. This? Commodore. This? That's the Affenpincher, or the Monkey Dog. 
Son of a gun, that's right. How do you do it, Joe? You never owned a dog in your whole life. Where'd you get that book? Grease Library, why? Well, now, didn't you think it's strange, a book on dogs in our library? Oh, I don't know. I called, they had it, I picked it up. Uh-huh. Take a look at the inside cover there. Now, what do you see? Nothing unusual, just the checkout card. Has anyone that you know or that you've heard of ever checked that book out? Sergeant Joe Friday, April 19th. I brushed up once, too. In fact, I had the library requisition that book. Why? What reason did you have to study up on dogs? Remember that case we worked last year? Oh, well, that's it. The trained dogs snatching ladies' purses. Now you're on the beam, pal. I just figured I should know something about dogs if I was working a case involving them. Like I'm doing now. Like you're doing now, finally. What'd you find out from those dog owners? I got hold of 15 of them. Same story. They advertised, and within a day or so, somebody came up with their dog. And collected a reward. Naturally. I'd say we have two suspects working, though. How do you figure? About half of the people gave the same description the Van Meter woman gave, a short guy driving a white Chevy. The other half described a tall suspect over six feet. Sounds like a Mutt and Jeff team. What kind of rewards are they hauling down? The least was 50. Most of them between one and 200. One guy paid 500. Burglary Auto Friday. Yes, John. Yeah. That's Adam, Henry, Adam. Right. Two suspects. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Right. Thanks, John. Oh, and you can put yourself down for another hit, pal. Yeah. Right. Thanks. That partial license paid off. Radio car FI'd two suspects last month. It was Harry Jennings, age 20, 5 foot 5, and Carl Barth, 24, 6 2. Martin Jeff. What were the circumstances? Possible car prowlers, questioned and released. El Centro Shopping Center? That's it. The FI address on the suspects matched the DMV information. Let's check it out. Before we go, try this one. Let me see that. No, no, not the name. No, no, just let me look at it. Whew, boy, I don't know. You got me on that one, pal. Joe, that is a wire-haired pointing griffin hound, considered to be one of the most common breeds of all time. Shall we go? The griffin hound was an ancient breed considered to be extinct today. At 3.10 p.m., we drove to the address listed on the suspect's vehicle registration. The house was a single-family residence located five blocks from the El Centro shopping center. The suspect's vehicle was nowhere in sight. to run an ad. Search and seizure says we can't go in and get them, so I guess we just wait. Not for long. Whatever you guys are selling, I don't want any. Where'd you get the dog, Harry? How do you know my name? We're police officers. Now I ask you a question, Harry. I found the dog if it's any of your business. Why? We have a hunch. Maybe you didn't find it. We'll play your hunch, cop. And if you have any more questions, see my lawyer. Do you have a search warrant? We'll get one. Do that, but for now, bug off, because I know my rights. Then you probably know we can seize evidence within your immediate grasp. Yeah, when there's probable cause for arrest, right? Right, Harry, and you're under arrest. And the charge, suspicion of grand theft. 3.30 p.m., after arranging for a radio car to guard the residence until a search warrant could be obtained, we transported Harry Jennings and the Scotty back to the office. 3.40 p.m., I contacted the Department of Animal Regulation and obtained the name and address of the Scotty's owner through the dog license number. Upon calling, we learned our hunch was right. The owner stated his Scotty was missing from his car at the El Centro Shopping Center sometime during the past two hours. We arranged for a radio car and a latent print man to make a preliminary investigation of the Scotty owner's vehicle. 4.10 p.m., we waited. When are you two guys gonna give up? I told you I found this dog walking down the street. Now, you can't prove nothing else. How many dogs have you found like that in the last few months, Harry? A few? I like dogs. Is that a crime? No, but stealing them out of cars and collecting a reward is. Yeah, well, them dogs were lost. They must have jumped out of the cars by accident. More than 20 of them from the same shopping center? So it's a coincidence. That don't prove nothing. Where's your partner, Harry? What are you talking about? I don't have no partner. You suppose he's out picking up more dogs, Harry? You're blowing smoke. There ain't no partner, I tell you. Does the name Carl Barth ring a bell? Never heard of him. Any luck, Charlie? Got a couple good lists from the right window. All right, there's your suspect. Let's see if we've got a case. Now, wait a minute. I got my rights. That's now. right, you do, Harry, and we're going to protect those rights. You bet. If they're not your prints, you go home until we can build a better case. 
one flat impression was taken of the suspect's right hand. Charlie King gave us the results. Here's a make, Joe, 10 points. What's 10 points mean? 10 points means we've got a case, Harry. Book him. p.m. While Bill booked Harry Jennings, I arranged for the preparation of an affidavit in support of a search warrant for the premises where the suspects had caged the other animals. A detective team was dispatched to relieve the radio car staked out on the location. Well, Harry's all tucked away. Where's the Scotty? Oh, the owner picked him up a few minutes ago. Hope he keeps him healthy for the court appearance. Well, judging from the emotional reunion, I'd say that dog's gonna be just fine. What do we do about suspect number two, Carl Barth? I put a team on the house. If he shows, they'll grab him. And if he doesn't show? Burglary auto Friday. Yes, sir. How long ago was that? No, you did just fine. We'll be right there. Myron Bentley just got a call. The Clumber Spaniel? Right. Man found his dog, said he was going to take it to him in 30 minutes. Think it's Carl Barth? Guy wanted to know if the reward offer was still good. 5.10 p.m., after arranging for a team of uniformed officers to cover the outside, we briefed Myron Bentley on the methods we wanted to employ in apprehending the suspect. We copied down the serial numbers of the reward money. Well, it's all finished for Duke now. I can't tell you how happy I am to have him coming home. Yes, sir, we understand how you feel. I didn't tell the wife. Wanted to make sure first, you know. But I'm not going to wait till next week. Sir. Duke's birthday. Not going to wait. Going to give him his present just as soon as he gets here. Yes. Duke. That's Duke. All right, now, Mr. Bentley, remember what we told you to do. Yes, sir. I will. I will. Duke! Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Duke, it's you. It's really you. How you been, fella? How you been? He's been just fine. Where'd you ever find him? He was digging in my garbage can. I saw what kind of dog he was, and I figured right off he was lost. So I took good care of him and looked for an ad in the paper. I'll be darned. His collar's gone. Yes, sir. He didn't have one on him when I found him. That's why I waited for an ad. Well, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Uh, uh, Smith, Randy Smith. Oh, Mr. Smith, my wife's going to be tickled pink. Yes, sir. I've got to be going. I have a date in about 30 minutes. Oh, I didn't mean to hold you up. Just want to thank you again, Mr. Smith. You did mention a reward in your ad. Oh, that I did. That I did. Darn near skipped my mind. Let's see. That's uh, 60, uh, 150, 200. Is that right? Yes, sir. Well, I better be going. I've got a couple of friends waiting. That's right. You do. Just hold it right hey, there. what is Police this? officers, you're under arrest. My name is Duke, owner Myron Bentley. Recognize this, Mr. Bentley? I sure do. Sack him up. Duke's collar. You were right all the time, Sergeant. Doesn't make any difference who was right, Mr. Bentley. The important thing is you got your dog back. Yes, sir, and believe me, that's all that counts. Come on, Duke. I got something for you. A nice new castle. Happy birthday, boy. Well, come on. Come on, don't you want to go into your nice new... Well, come on, boy. What's the matter, don't you like your new house? Oh, come on, Duke. Go into your nice new castle. Huh? Well, no wonder you won't go in. You've got your lead on. Go on, boy. OK to give him one of these? Oh, sure, sure. Say, that's all right, Officer Gannon. How'd you know to do that? You know quite a bit about dogs. Tell him. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On December 3rd, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The court found the suspects guilty of five counts of burglary and three counts of grand theft.